Hello, Coach. What's up, man? First question is, how are you feeling today? Wow. I feel slightly better than I did Saturday evening. Um, you know, there's still a 24-hour rule uh, about wins and losses, right? You go or bad, you learn from both, you move on. One of the one of the beautiful things about football in general during the season is you don't have time to hold on to a win or to you know, get over a loss. You get 24 hours. By the time Sunday afternoon is there, you got to move on to the next game. Anyway. So um, we had some very good meetings yesterday. Um, learning. Um, whenever you get beat like that, especially at home. Um, a lot of the lessons tend to get lost in just the sheer, you know, amount of the loss, right? So just going back to the process of this thing and making sure that individually we understand, hey, my footwork was bad here or my tackling was bad here or my read was bad here and actually learning from those things. You know, because to me, you know, whether we lose by one point or a hundred points, still lost game, so, you know, I don't ever want to lose, but as long as we are continuing to learn from these losses, uh, then it will put us in a better place. So I think that the meetings went well yesterday. Um, there were a lot of calling up of people and expectation levels. Um, there were, uh, was, um, so, what I always consider good back and forth between people asking questions and getting the answers that they need to move on. So, you know, feel a little bit better just because, you know, you're further removed, but, you know, that's something, Nate, that, you know, I'll never forget that. You know, just won't. So, you know, some of the stuff I share with the team is for the team, it's not for public consumption, but um, getting them to understand how important perceptions are you know, about what we are and where we are um, and then how you perceive yourself too. So, <clears throat> especially when you have to move on and play the number one team in the country, right? So, uh, learn from, take the learning lessons we can from last week and then to move on and hopefully apply those lessons is what the goal is. Then. Second question, what is your take from the game? You know, the negative of it is we never, um, I shouldn't say never, we did not do a lot of fighting. And obviously I don't mean physically, but, you know, fighting against being put in bad situations, fighting against, um, you know, people just playing hard, right? I don't think we played, I know, we did not play as hard as they did. Um, you know, so we have to get more out, I have to get more out of the team some way, somehow, um, to be able to get more effort. Um, I thought they had, you know, the X's and O's part of it. I thought they had a really good game plan on offense and defense. But I also think that, you know, like I said, based on those meetings yesterday, we did not perform, um, you know, to what we are trying to make our standard. The communication was not there at all on offense or defense or special teams. So, you know, making sure that we learn from that, but like I said before, you also have to apply that. You just got to play hard. You know? And I told them at halftime, I told the team at halftime, if you, you know, I was going to watch the second half of the game, which now I've already watched five times. Um, just to see the effort from the people that were playing in the second half, right? We played some young people on offense and defense. You know, how did they go in the game? How did they fight individually? How did they play individually? So, you know, there will be, you know, as with anything uh, like that, you know, we turned on the news last night this morning, and college football coaches getting fired all over the country, right? NFL coaches getting fired all over the place. So, um, I haven't been fired yet, so that's a good thing. I've already met with the boss today, so... It is getting those kids to understand that, you know, this is, 
it's all or nothing. Right? It's, it, you have to be all in or um, you can't be a part of this team going forward. And so, like I said, there were some hard come to Jesus moments yesterday in talking with kids and, and getting them to understand and accepting, I guess, our truth as coaches um, as to this is why you're not going to play anymore. This is why you're going to be competing for your job again. This is why you're going to change positions. This is why you're not going to play very much anymore. This is why you're going to scout team this week. So, um, again, as long as we are listening to the intent of the message, um, but we're also, more importantly, taking into consideration the content of said message, then we'll be better off for all those things. Third question, what can we do offensively? Um, I think right now, offensively, we, you know, we are still searching for, you know, not necessarily our identity. Our identity is you know, we're going to try to win the ball. Um, you know, we're going to use RPOs and play action to set up passing game. Um, I think from top to bottom, saying from coaches first, right? I mean, we have to put this on us first in, in getting our kids ready to play in football games, um, getting them ready to, you know, follow their rules, right? When you play football on offense or defense, but on offense specifically, you have rules and you have to follow those rules, right? You played offensive line, you guys in one technique, you make a, you know, base base call and you go about your business. But he could also be in a two eye which may change, whether it's a you know, base base or now it's a you know, boom boom call, whatever it is. So I think that we get too locked into, as players, we're too locked into our players right now, are too locked into, well, the picture doesn't look exactly like you told me to, Coach, so I can't do it if it's not. So, you know, you cannot still be robotic and play this game. There are rules that we have, but you also have to just be a football player. You have to have some football intelligence. And there are a lot of things right now where our football intelligence or our FBI needs to increase drastically, and there is no pill for that. There is, you know, there's nothing you can do for that except gain experience week to week, practice to practice, game to game. So I would like to believe that, uh, you know, we, we will take this hard last two weeks and learn from them and put that you know, back into the process. You know, and, you know, like I told you before a couple of weeks ago, I told everybody else, right, the process right, gets used a lot and savings and really smart for using it and Belichick's really smart for using it and you know, businesses and everybody else. But you know, at some point in time, you know, with the instant gratification generation that we're dealing with, they got to see something happen positive. So, I think that, you know, pointing out those errors yesterday on film and, you know, those guys on offense finishing sentences of our coaches. So the message is getting through and somehow it's rattling around in there long enough where you can regurgitate the answer back to us as coaches, but then you have to go do it, right? And sometimes it's going to be harder than others to actually go do. And you, know, you can think and say a lot, it's easy, we're sitting here talking, it's easy, but to go out and do and then do it again, consistency, um, those are the two hardest things. And really, consistency might be the hardest thing to do in life. So we have to be more consistent with our steps, with our reads, with our motions, with you know, our calls, with getting calls into the game too, right? Like there's, you know, I'm not about to fire any coaches. I got what I got, right? Like I said, I haven't been fired today. <laughs> so it is making sure that these guys can get to the next level of trust. Both sides of it, right? coach to player and player to player. So making sure that we still do that. Now it's going to be harder, right? Um, your schedule doesn't get easier. So um, making sure that for me personally, and I talked to a lot of people um, this weekend or in the last 36 hours, you know, what do you do after you take a butt kicking like that? You don't want to lose the team. I don't want to lose the team. I don't want infighting to start to occur. I mean, 70 to nothing, defense and offense, right? I mean, you both took your, take your, took your lumps. I mean, there's no there's no finger pointing going on, right? Now, if it was 7 to 0, okay, maybe you can point a finger. 
70 to 0. No fingers can be pointed unless you're doing this. And one of the things I can share with you, I told the team, is I got to point this finger first. Right? This is on me. Nobody else's name is going to be on that game 30 years from now. Mine. That's the selfish part of it, too. Right? No one's going to know who the starting quarterback was. No one's going to know who the starting line, line, linebacker was. But they're going to know who the head coach was because my name is attached to that. And that's not for the kids' consumption. They should know that and think about it. But that's the selfish part of it, me personally. The kids have to understand that when they see that one day and come back here 10, 20, 30 years from now for their homecoming, they're going to have that memory. Nothing I can do about that. And I'll be long gone and they'll be coming back to homecoming and they'll be like, hey, remember that game? How we fix that is following the process, being consistent, and not having that happen again next year or any other year for that matter. Uh, fourth question, what can we do defensively? You know, defensively, we, we made mistakes, and those mistakes were physical. Um, I think Augustana uh, was very good up front. I think they controlled uh, our front four a lot better than anyone had, including Washington. Um, I think we saw, again, what a consistent program looks like. I mean, with those coaches... That staff has been together for quite some time at all this uh, Those kids have bought in to what they are preaching at all this time. They obviously are lifting because you know, they didn't get like that. They weren't born like that. Those kids looked better. They looked different. They looked developed as athletes. So, you know, we have to do a better job of developing our athletes. We said that, you know, five weeks ago. So we are still lifting three times a week. Like, that's not going to change. I mean, we have to do those things to keep in line with how we're going to progress and how we're going to continue the process. But from the back end perspective, giving them big plays, which we did to the tune of about 15 on Saturday, um, to run more pass. Most of the time when big plays happen in the pass game, it is a communication problem. Someone doesn't know someone else is supposed to be covering, or this guy, or I thought. He was supposed to cover this, so on and so forth. So we had multiple communication breakdowns on the back end, and then also we had multiple individual breakdowns, right? Like everyone did their job, or as we've determined, everybody did their 111, except for one person. So now, somebody didn't do their 111, they just did their own thing. And as a coach, that's usually the thing that drives you the craziest. Because 10 people could be right on defense, but if one person is wrong, they can get tested. And one person being wrong yesterday or Saturday um, gave up a touchdown three times. So we have to work on our communication, continue to work on our communication. Um, we're getting better at that in practice. And then from the special teams perspective, that's the next question is you can't turn the ball over four times. You can't have back-to-back -back fumbles on the right? um, I wanted Antonio to go back in the game. Right? I looked at the film, the first one, you know, in slow motion perspective, wasn't a fumble, his knee was down. The second one was a fumble. And after the first one, he came off, said it wasn't a fumble, so we got a chance to do it again. All right, here's your redemption. Here's your, you fumble again, well, okay, you're not gonna get 13s, right? Offense hadn't been on the field for about 19 minutes, 20 minutes at that point, because of the two turnovers. So. I can, as the head coach, give you an opportunity to prove yourself. I can even give you your second chance to prove yourself. But if you don't do your 111 twice in a row and it's detrimental to the team, well, then I gotta come out. You know? we start again on Monday and go through the process again. But I can't continue to allow you to affect the other 69 guys on the sideline in that way. So um, that is the harder answer because again there is no magic pill i can't give you confidence right? there is no magic pill to give you experience there is no magic pill to give you heart and that has to be intrinsic that has to be from the inside here of things you want to do we have to put our guys in situations where they can be successful more 
definitely have to put our guys in situations where you know, there is some pressure behind it, right, to simulate pressure. Um, but there is nothing like just getting into a game and the intensity of the game, your adrenaline is flowing, and being able to play, you know, not with emotion, but just with passion. Right? Emotion runs out and goes up and down. If you have passion for something, then you know you are passionate all the time. You are trying to do whatever is necessary to get said job done. So we have to learn the difference between passion and emotion. I think some of our guys are too emotional, and I also think that um, the emotional intelligence on the team, just like the football IQ on the team, still needs to be increased drastically. Speaking about the punting, can you do you, can you comment on the shoot incident? So they we faked a punt on our own minus twenty yard line, and they tackled our punter. And when they tackled him, they tackled him and took a shoe with him. They then threw said shoe to their sideline. I obviously didn't know that they had stolen the shoe until the punter gets to our sideline and says. Hey, they took my shoe and threw it on the sideline. Now, when I told the referee on our the side judge on our sideline, like, hey, they stole our shoe. I'm not wasting the time out. The kid's not going back out there without a shoe. So you need to, and they have walkie-talkies, basically the earpieces, you need to communicate with the line judge on the other side and tell them they need to get the shoe. Well, when they got the shoe, it was under towels, under their bench. So they obviously hid the damn shoe. Penalty or not, right? Um, when people question the integrity of our kids, but then go and do something like that, where is the questioning of their integrity? So that's my biggest question. Whether that's supposed to be a penalty or not, whether that's gamesmanship or not, because that's what someone will hide behind. But gamesmanship and integrity eventually are going to do this. You take somebody's shoe and throw it on their sideline, cool. You take somebody's shoe, put it on the sideline, and then hide it, now we got an integrity problem. So, <clears throat> gamesmanship, okay. Integrity, different level. Especially when our integrity had been called into question before when we beat them in overtime last year. So, <clears throat> that's something that for me, like Michael Jordan said, I took that person. So I will take that person moving forward, Nate. But as far as penalties being thrown for that, one, the referees would have to see it, which is what they used as their reasoning. They did not see it happen. And to their credit, they allowed them to get the shoe and held the time for us to be able to get our partner back to shoe so he could punt. Um, so all in all, it wasn't a game altering scenario? No. Uh, is it something I will remember? Yes. Is it something where another team's integrity should be called into question? Yeah, because they did it. So, um, I can now tell you that we have a rule on this team that you do not hide shoes from the <laughs> punter or anyone else for that. So. All right, last question. No Central is a hard opponent. What's our preparation for Saturday's game? You know, to me, when you get to play the number one team in the country, you should be fired up. You should be absolutely sky high on this thing, right? You know, it's not everybody that one gets to play in uh, a conference as good as ours, where you're going to eventually play probably two top 20, if not top 10 teams. So when you get to play the number one team in the country, like you want to, you want to show out. Like to me, again, playing with Vanderbilt. I played no one team in the country a lot. My mindset and the guys that I went to school with, our mindset was, if you're going to play the number one team in the country, then I want to go prove to those cats that I am better than them, even though they're supposed to be at a better school than what I am, right? I took it, again, personal. I'm going to go out and prove to these cats that I'm better than you, individually or as a unit or as a team. So I didn't want to be or needed to be motivated to play the number one team in the country. That's motivation enough. I have to get that to them and talk to the leadership council today, making sure that they can echo that for the team. But, you know, this is the type of thing where film will be seen, right? North Central has guys that big boy football is looking at. By big boy football, I mean 
the ones that get paid to play football. Like, there will be scouts that watch this film in the National Football League. There will be other teams across the country that watch this film because they're the number one team in the country. So knowing that, I would always want to go and show out on film because it's the number one team in the country. Um, but they're still the number one team in the country. So all of those things and lessons that we've learned and footwork to improve on and tackling to improve on, all those things have got to you know, be better this week. Uh, we have to go up there and play them at their place. Um, you know, last year when we played them, you know, on defense, last year I was probably one of the best halves in football that we had played all year, truly. Um, but there was a change that week, and you know, things were different in defense and offense. But it, it is still the number one team in the country. We have to find a way to not slow them down, but stop them. Right? No one's done that yet. We have to find a way to be able to score points about, you know, and get them to do what they don't want to do. Right? This is still an X's and O's game. This is still chess, not checkers. This is about setting plays up on offense to get them to do something and break their rules to gain an advantage. This is something about on defense, taking away what you can, or at least maybe what they do best to at least get them to their second or third option. You know, they're going to run the ball. They're about 68% run right now that they run the ball. So we got to stop the run. And really, until this past week, we have been good at stopping the run. Yeah, this was the first time we've given up over 90 yards rushing in a game. So we have got to be better with stopping the run this week and making a still very young quarterback beat us by throwing the ball. So um, we can't allow them to run the ball, set up play action, and then now the whole playbook is available to them. And on offense, I mean, we have to find a way, to, again, to find their rules, understand what they're doing, and then use those things against them. And find a way to get matchups, right? Find a way to get, you know, our old linemen on linebackers, how to get our receivers or better receivers on their linebackers or safeties, things like that. So, you know, as far as motivation, playing number one team in the country. As far as execution, you cannot have mistakes in a game like this because Ultimately, you will pay the price for those even more than we did last week. So, we cannot turn the ball over on offense, and we have to find ways to get takeaways on defense. We did that last year, right, against them in that first half. That's what I said. But then we got an interception in the red zone in their first drive, and then we got an interception in midfield in their second drive, right? So, I tell the guys, it sounds a lot better in Spanish, Nate, and I don't remember how to say it. This guy named Raul that I used to work with in New York City. He said, translates to, better than me, none, like me, all. I've never met another man who jumps in his pants two legs at a time. <laughs> now, that sounds way cooler in Spanish, right? But Raul used to say that all the time, and so I tell the kids, look, I ain't met a cat yet that jumps in both his pants legs two legs at a time. I ain't met that dude. There's probably somebody out there. Maybe somebody gonna watch this video and he's gonna reply with somebody jumping in the pit. <laughs> but I ain't met that guy, man. So if you put your pants one leg on a time, then how much different or better are you than anyone else? Right? So yes, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually, uh, place, merit, all those things. Number one team in the country. Playing the 200 team in the country, uh, for all I know. We have to take that underdog, underdog mentality and use it. There should be no pressure on us this week, right? Zero. So, trigger, right? There should be no pressure this week. Try to go make that play. And then make it, right? If there's no hesitation, which there have been the past two weeks, on offense and on defense, if there's no hesitation, go, right? Trust your eyes. Trust your body. Go make it. If you're feeling pressure this week, then probably not ready for college football. There is absolutely no pressure on us this week. We can fake punts and field goals and double reverse passes and all types of stuff this week. There is no pressure on us. So <clears throat> this is one of those things that playing the number one team in the country at their place with no pressure on us, we should just go out and play a very, very good football game because... If you don't have to worry about those things, it just goes back to just playing a game and having fun.
Let's go play a game now. All right, Coach, thank you for your time and good luck next week. Thanks, man.